stipple effect definitely definitely made it very very lightweight i gotta be honest with you guys it feels really really good i don't even see any wrinkles on the graphic this is a really good graphic for a shirt what's up superstars we generated this artwork using Midjourney AI. In this tutorial, you'll master stipple effects to craft detailed textured designs and blend psychedelic elements for a unique style. This effect is similar to a halftone screen, which makes the design much more breathable for DTF printing. Let's begin. Import the image into Adobe Photoshop. Change the background to black. Select the quick selection tool from the toolbar and click on the empty space in the background. Go to the select menu, then choose similar. This will select all similar colors in the artwork. Open the adjustments panel and select hue and saturation. A mask will be created from the background you selected. Change the color to black by dragging the lightness slider to the left. Create a clipping mask by pressing Control alt g on your keyboard or by right clicking on the layer and selecting create clipping mask. Open another image to be placed inside the helmet. If the background of the image is plain, go to Select, then choose Subject. This will select the foreground image. If some parts are not included in the selection, click on the Quick Selection tool and paint over the areas that were not selected. Click on the mask icon at the bottom right to remove the background. Now, scale the image to fit inside the helmet Lower the opacity to see what's underneath, making it easier to position the image accurately. Drag the corners inward or outward to scale the image. As you hover over the corners, edges, or middle, you'll be able to rotate the image. Restore the opacity to 100%. Duplicate the first image you imported and place it on the top layer. We will create a hole in the helmet. Click on the pen tool and start tracing the visor of the helmet. Once you've finished tracing, press Ctrl Enter on your keyboard to create a marquee selection. Click on the mask icon at the bottom right to remove the background. Press Ctrl I to invert the mask. Select the saturation layer and the image layer, then merge them together by right clicking and choosing merge layers. You can use Liquify for this, but I will use the warp tool. Use the rectangular marquee tool to select the part you want to warp. Press Ctrl T, Click on the Warp tool and start adjusting the image. Rename the layers. Now let's add an additional image to the foreground. Import the image into Photoshop and we'll remove its background. Since the image's background is too busy, we'll use the Pen tool to remove it manually. Click on the Pen tool and start tracing the edges of the image. Once you've finished tracing, press Ctrl Enter on your keyboard to create a marquee. Press Ctrl J to duplicate the selected part. Delete the original image as we won't be using it anymore. Finally, adjust the levels to make the dark parts darker. Select both the image and the levels adjustment. Then convert them to a smart object. Right click on the layer and select Convert to Smart Object. Scale and position the image to your liking. Let's change the colors using color range. Go to select, then choose color range. Make sure it's set to sampled colors. Click OK. Click on the fill icon at the bottom right and choose solid color. Using the eyedropper, click on the part of the image where you want to change the color. Click OK. Repeat these steps for the other parts of the image. Add additional details to the image if needed. Once done, select all the layers and convert them to a smart object. Press Ctrl Shift Alt E to merge all the layers. I have prepared a color palette for this artwork. Go to the filler adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel and select posterize. This will limit or reduce the number of colors in the photo. 
create a new layer and place it above the posterized layer. Go to Select, then choose Color Range. Using the eyedropper tool, click on the area where you want to change the color. Then click the Fill icon at the bottom right and choose Solid Color. Use the eyedropper tool to select your desired color from the color palette. Repeat these steps for the remaining parts. Add additional details if needed. Now we will create the stipple patterns. Create a new document with dimensions of 500 by 500 pixels and set the resolution to 72. Add a new layer, then go to Edit and select Fill. Change the drop-down menu to white and click OK. Next, go to Filter and then Filter Gallery. Navigate to Textures and then to Grain. Change the grain type to Stippled. Set the intensity to 51. Go to Edit, then Transform, and select Scale. Enter 200% in the Width and Height boxes in the top toolbar. Scaling up the artwork helps soften hard square pixels, making them appear as larger circular dots that resemble pen marks. Add a new layer, then go to Edit and select Fill. Go to Filter, then Filter Gallery again, ensuring you choose the option further down the list, not the one at the top, which would repeat the last effect settings. Increase the intensity to 61 to enhance the density of the dot spread. Transform and scale this layer up by 200%. Add the grain effect again from the filter gallery, increasing the intensity by another 10, making it 71. Repeat the process of creating a new layer and increasing the grain intensity until you reach 100. Remember to scale up the layer by 200% each time. Select all the layers and change the blending mode to multiply. Select the top layer and click on the Move tool in the toolbar. Click and drag with the mouse to move the layer in random directions to offset the dots. Select the next layer down and do the same, shifting it in a different direction so the dots don't perfectly overlap. Once all the layers are randomly positioned, toggle the visibility of each layer in turn to observe the pattern density gradually decrease. With only the first layer visible, go to Edit, then Define Pattern. Name the pattern and click OK. Repeat the process with the remaining layers until you have a collection of 10 stipple patterns. We will use these patterns later. When finished, open the artwork again, go to Filler Adjustment Layer at the bottom of the Layers panel and select Black and White. Next, go to Filler Adjustment Layer once more and select Posterize. On the Properties tab, set levels to 10, but I will leave mine at 9. Click on the Magic Wand tool. Set Tolerance to 0 and uncheck Anti-Alias and Contiguous. Starting with the lightest tone, click with the Magic Wand tool to load its selection, then go to Edit and choose Fill. Change the drop-down menu to Pattern and select the lightest dot pattern. Click OK. Click on the next lightest tone and fill it with the next dot pattern and so on. You can use the shortcut Shift plus F5 to quickly bring up the Fill dialog box. Select each posterized level and fill it with progressively darker dot patterns. Repeat the steps as needed. Once you're done, drag the colored artwork layer underneath the stipple pattern layer. Click on the stipple pattern layer and set the blending mode to darker color. 
Duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl J on your keyboard and set the blending mode to Overlay. Decrease the opacity of the darker color layer to around 30-40%. Click on the colored artwork layer and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl J. Set the blending mode of this duplicate layer to Overlay. We will now create a black knockout. Group all the layers by selecting them and pressing Ctrl G. Merge all the layers by pressing Ctrl Alt E on your keyboard. Press Ctrl Shift U to convert the image to grayscale. Press Ctrl L to adjust the levels. Drag the right slider to the left to lighten the white areas. Drag the left slider to the right to darken the black areas. Click OK. Press Ctrl A to select all, then copy by pressing Ctrl C. This will copy the black and white image that will be placed inside the mask. Click on the group layer and create a mask. Hold Alt and click on the mask. Press Ctrl V to paste the copied image onto the mask. Add adjustments if needed, then add text to complete the design. And we're done. Hey superstars, today I'm thrilled to bring you guys some exciting updates from our website that's gonna revolutionize the way you guys order and design your prints. So let's dive right in. We've introduced a brand new gang sheet builder right on our website. This is a game changer for all our creative customers who prefer to take charge of their own designs. With our new builder, you have the power to lay out your own gang sheets exactly the way that you want it. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything that we're gonna be doing here today. Let's check out these prints. Let's just measure out this design. More than a 15 inch. The Techno, 12 inches. As you can tell with that stipple effect, it definitely helped out adding a lot of half tones because turn this around, look at how much it took out. This is gonna be very, very lightweight. I'm actually very excited to put this on a shirt. Let's check out the shirt. For our blanks, we're gonna be using this US 3017 extra large black shirt, but only be pressing this on the back side because on the front side, as you can tell, does have a pocket here. If you guys have any recommendations to what we should press on this pocket, definitely put it in the comment section below. But as for right now, we're gonna be only pressing this on the back side. And for our press, we're gonna be using our Heatmaster Prisma. It's been a fan favorite for all our videos, so it makes sense for us to use it now. We have a 16 by 20 layout and a 10 inch pullout, as well as also you could thread your shirts. So it makes it very easy for any type of project. Now let's get started. Before we get to pressing, let's square this off first and get this collar bar off. There we go, looks great. Now, let's put this on the shirt. Use a microfiber cloth just to make sure everything has been embedded onto the fabric. 15 second wait, you should be set. And it should be ready to peel. All right, we're gonna second press it with our matte sheet. Let's take a closer look. The stipple effect definitely made it very, very lightweight. I gotta be honest with you guys, it feels really, really good. It doesn't just give it like that kind of rough screen printed feel, but it also gives out a less of the graphics, so it makes it more breathable, makes it more airy. Like, look at it, barely, I don't even see any wrinkles on the graphic or something normally where this big that's really solid will actually come out very very wrinkled so this came out very well 
making it very very lightweight oh, oh like this is a really good graphic for a shirt i think this was a success guys all right guys this is how it came out feels great looks great let's see how it wears oh. looks good i honestly think this might be my new favorite shirt all right guys, if you guys are looking for a DTS supplier or you guys are trying to replace your existing one, definitely give us a shot. All right, that's it for me for now guys. We hope you enjoyed the video. We enjoyed making it. And if you guys did like it, definitely leave a like and comment if you wanna see more videos like this. And definitely subscribe if you saw value in these videos. All right guys, I'll catch you on the next one.